You guys ready? Yeah, hit it. Well, I appreciate you guys taking time to come out. I mean, scrimmage number two. This is a big scrimmage for us because not only is it the practice where you can really evaluate everything prior to this point, and at, and at the end of the day, whatever we put on film is who we are as a football team, right? But it's seeing the progress we've had from scrimmage one to scrimmage two, from obviously just individual players to position groups to sides of the ball and then to schematically, fundamentally, all those kind of things too. This is really, a, we got a lot of good reps today. This is a scrimmage, and I told our team this before uh, taking the field, is this is the one that we use a ton of evaluation for because you got scrimmage one, first first time really taking guys to the ground in, in a bunch of months. Then you got the second scrimmage, who can take the biggest jumps from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. And so we're gonna use this film to evaluate in a major way. Cause that's the, like we talked about even last week, that's the beautiful part about our game is it is very black and white. You are what you put on film, no different. Like I was joking, what I put on film on that softball diamond the other night, that's who I am. I can't run from that. That's who I am. And so that's no different for our football team. We are who we put on film. There's some, there's some really good stuff, some stuff that we're going to be really proud of and some stuff on film that we need to continue to grow. Um, we need to keep taking steps. We've got two more practices next week, spring game on Saturday, and we got to finish this thing strong. So we're proud of, proud of what we did today. Um, obviously, a highlight last week was not any interceptions on the offensive side of the ball. A big point of emphasis on defense was we got to take the ball away. Fast forward a week, once again, the growth from uh, week one to week two, right now the defense was able to create some interceptions, create some chaos, be able to take the ball away. I think we had two or three interceptions. Um, it was cool for the defense to see that. Now on the flip side, offensively, we got to find ways to clean that up. We cannot give the ball away. So that's just an example. Proud of where our guys are growing. It was cool to see um, you know, our tailbacks ran hard today. Got to give a shout out to Sire Gaines and Breezy Dunbar. I mean, they, they did a great job. Um, it was cool to see them run hard, catch the ball in the backfield. Offensive line did a good job creating some um, creating some yards. It's, it's either ball out of the backfield quick, but even some interior runs. It was cool to see Breezy and Sire do a really good job running in between the tackles. So um, we're going to keep growing. we got some guys that got a little bit banged up in the scrimmage. I don't think anything too serious, um, but we'll keep it moving to finish spring ball the right way. Eric was talking to us this week about uh, the defense and, you know, kind of how they did take that uh, – Personally, they didn't get any turnovers. You know, he said three, uh, three is the goal. So getting three today, like you said, you know, what's that? Uh, how, how much does that defense feel redeemed? Do you think? Yeah, it's everything. I mean, if you get three takeaways in a game, uh, you will lead the nation in takeaways. Which usually, when you lead the nation in takeaways, that directly equals success as a football team. And so it's a huge point of emphasis for our defense. We've we did a really good job at the end of season creating takeaways last year, but defensively, we need to do a better job throughout. Um, stealing possessions. Then on the flip side, offensively, can't give the ball away. And so winning the turnover battle, I mean, the stats are there. That's the number one stat you look at in regards to winning games is the turnover margin. Winning that 90 whatever percent of times directly correlates to winning football games. We've got to practice it now. Jeremiah Irby seems like he's just always around the ball. Mm -hmm. Why is that? He, he trains that way too. He trains that way. Since he's been here, he's done a great job in the meeting room with Coach Demo growing in the fundamentals and techniques we, we need him to play with, but he also plays extremely hard. And so more times than not, we, do, we talk to our team, luck follows effort. The closer you are to the ball because of your pursuit and your commitment to this football team, you're gonna be around the football to make more plays. He's also very good at tracking the ball in the air. So not only is he, is he stepped up to be one of our better, better cover corners at this point, he really, does a really good job at playing the ball in the air. I think he had you know, a couple interceptions today, so proud of him. Somebody who's played as a starter in the Pac-12, What's the hardest thing when you try to come in and learn a new defense and fit in? Yeah. Well, first off, it's it's us as us doing a good job as coaches setting the foundation for what's expected for them. We don't talk about expectations in regards to getting interceptions, making plays. Expectations first and foremost are being early at everything and having a good attitude. When you come here, if you're a freshman, a transfer, that's the standard to come here. And then from there, we build out football schools, so we teach Everybody from transfers to obviously the majority of our players are incoming freshmen, teaching them the language, offense and defensively what the language is. So we have a plan, Bob, to get them up to speed quickly. We know how to develop people here. That's not my doing. That's what's happened here for over two decades. We're all about development and development of our players and our coaches. But a young man like Jeremiah Irby, it's coming in, being early, having a great attitude. But then you have to have a willingness to get outside your comfort zone, meet new players be vulnerable to create new relationships. And he's done a great job. In the months he's been here, he's become a very close part of this team and excited. He's going to be a huge asset for us in the future. Now I'm watching seven, Cal, how different is what you ask the corner to do versus what they Yeah, everyone's got different structures. There's a lot of similarities um, for what we do defensively. 
Um, but there's always different structures, different language, different verbiage. That's been the biggest transition. Spencer, what can you tell us about your uh, play quarterback today and, and how yeah. that went? Yeah, uh, we, we went, the quarterbacks were live today, which was something we haven't done in, in spring ball here in a while. It was cool to see our guys prep that way, offensive line prep to, for the protections. And obviously defensively, it's, it's no longer me calling sacks or not. It, did you get the guy on the ground or not? I think it was awesome for our team to see those. Awesome for the quarterbacks to feel the stress that that rush is a true rush now. It's no longer just rush is, rush is going to uh, run by you. They're going to be able to finish on the quarterback. So it was really good to see both sides battle, and it's going to be a really good evaluation for all our quarterbacks to see where they're at. Mm -hmm. A lot of them did some good stuff, and there's obviously some things to improve on. Throwing interceptions, a huge port of emphasis for us to get cleaned up. But uh, both CJ, Malachi had a couple big time throws. Malachi had a big time run for a first down in the high red zone. So there's a couple highlights. Once again, we were truly playing football today. We weren't blowing the whistle on the quarterbacks. It was live, let's go to work. Two minute, we made wrap so we can really get that work. Um, but we wanted to see our guys play the game. Offensively and defensively, we're not, we weren't gonna put it in the whistle. Uh, we were gonna let them go play the game. And I think it was really, it's gonna be a really good evaluation. So I think both uh, CJ, Malachi, Cut, Cole did some really good things. Um, and there's gonna be a lot to clean up, Jay, to your question. Because right now you see live fire with the rush being a true rush. You're gonna put some things on film of where we are, where we need to keep growing to. You notice Malachi when we got out here, this is the last player out here. Yep. I don't know if he was. He just seemed like he was kind of like going through some yep. of his checks or whatever down yep. here by himself. Yep. Is that that's something he often does? Like, he does. He does it almost every time after practice. I mean, especially for Malachi, he's the only quarterback in that room that had to learn the offense, right? Every, all the other quarterbacks coming back knew the offense, knew what it was, knew the knew the verbiage. So he's the one that had to pick up and get rolling quickly just in regards to understanding the schemes. Coach Cutter, Coach Coop done a really good job with Malachi teaching those things, and he's progressed a ton. I mean, I thought he had his best practice as a Bronco scrimmage number one. And he's continually getting better every week. There's some stuff he did really well today. There's some stuff he has to clean up. And so that's what we're excited to look at as we finish spring. What has Sire game done well this spring, and what does he need to get better? Yeah, first off, his mentality is different than a lot of freshmen when they come in. Like I said last week, he's that guy that you tell him once what, what is expected, being early, having a good attitude, in the training room, in the weight room, in the meeting room. He wants to be great way more than anybody else wants that for him, right? He's on a mission, and those are the type of guys that fit here. Those are the type of guys that are extremely successful here. The couple months he's been here, he's developed from the second he walked on campus to now. He had his best practice as a Bronco today, without question. Ran the ball extremely hard, caught the ball of the backfield very well, made people miss. He's a low ego, high output young man, um, and so excited where he's growing to. Cyrus Gaines is going to be a really good player for us this year. What are the similarities between him in those regards and a guy like Ty Bannifield? I feel like you talk about them Very similar. kind of the same breath. Yep. And then, um, I mean, is he going to push Breezy at, mm -hmm. at this point? I mean, like, you see the him in practice, but, like, do you think he'll, he'll yeah. push Breezy even for a backup role? Yeah. The goal, Jay, at every position is for if you're the number one, number two, number three, that you're always pushing to catch that guy in front of you. If you're the starter, you're trying to catch somebody in the country. Right. Like I'm not there's never any part of us that can be casual. That's when you get caught. So for the running back room, we've got some really good young running backs and they've done it. And Coach Jamo's done a really good job turning the heat up in that room, putting them with different groups. Um, and I think both guys have done a really good job. Breezy's had a really good spring at this point. Breezy's got a top end speed that is different. Right? He can put his foot in the ground and get to speed now. That's very exciting for our offense. Sarah Gaines was again is one of the running backs new to that room that had to also pick up the offense brand new as an early enrollee freshman. He stepped up and done some really good things. So the competition is going to be high, and we want it to always be that way. And I do believe that you know Sarah Gaines and Ty Benefield are built very similar in regards to their mentality, to where um, they don't need the encouragement to go to work. Right? We're, you're going to give that to them as a coach. They want it for themselves more than anybody else wants it for them, and they're on a mission. And that turns into doesn't mean that it's going to work out for them overnight, doesn't mean that they're going to be exactly where we want them to be today, but they're going to grow to become everything they want to be. Jake Ripps, a guy who's kind of been weighing the wings the last mm -hmm. couple of years, you know, what are you seeing from him in this spring and what have you seen from him in the last two years that yeah. he's really to put himself in this position? Yeah. Jake Ripp, uh, very, very proud of the spring Jake Ripp has had to this point. We, we're playing him in a couple different spots, even in some of our base packages. He's playing some outside linebacker. Um, he's making more tackles in space than he's made in the past. He's very physical at the point in regards to getting off blocks. And he's one of the 
top – we grade everything. He's one of the top players in our defense in regards to relentless pursuit. He is always around the football, to Ron's question earlier. He's always around the football, and so he's made a lot of really big plays in the football. Strips, punch outs, because he's turned into where his mentality is relentless. Very excited about the spring Jay Grips had. He's going to be a big player for us this, this fall. You know, obviously with the little injuries to linebackers, he's getting a little more time. But, yep. it's, you know, if you do have full, fully healthy uh, linebackers, it's still going to be a, a point of emphasis to get them on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, like we talked about the running backs, competition is going to be through the roof at every position. That's why in spring, these are true seeding charts. Just because a t uh, guys are out with the blues doesn't mean they're going to be out with the blues the rest of spring. They might be with the blues one day, orange is the next. We're going to find the best 11. It might not even be um, in a starting role, but it might be in a package role. We're going to find ways to get guys in the field that have earned it, not because of what they've tweeted about, not because of what they've talked about, because of what they put on film at practice. Those are the guys that are going to continually move the dead chart to be starters or players for us in all positions. Jay Griff's done that. Obviously, we're fired up to get Marco back for the summertime, but the, the competition, the LB room, just like every position, is going to be turned up. You guys are uh, obviously more. experimenting with the uh... – Oh, sorry. Uh, you're experimenting with the, the uh, in helmet communication this spring, mm -hmm. obviously. I mean, I'm just curious, as a former DC who's used to relaying calls down to the field, what's that like for you to see that? And, and, and what benefit is that going to be to, to this team this year? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Just like any change in rules, you got to find out how to make an advantage for your team and how to make sure it's not a disadvantage. Um, offensively, I think it's going to be a huge help to offenses around the country for the offensive coordinator to be able to talk to the quarterbacks, not only the offensive play, but also be able to talk them through situations. Hey, uh, feel pressure here, be ready to look to the bound, whatever that might be, where normally you just have to hope that the quarterbacks are trained that way. And a lot of times they're not. So I think you're gonna see some younger quarterbacks be more explosive and more consistent because of the help with the coach to player communication, which is gonna be a huge, huge assist. Um, defensively, um, we're still working through exactly what it's going to look like for us. If it's going to be on a safety, is it going to be on a linebacker? How is that going to be? But being able to help field zone situations. Obviously, in the NFL, it's a little bit different because offenses and defenses always huddle up. So you can call it in, but the game in college is, is not a huddle game more times than not. So we're still working through it just like a lot of schools are kind of defensively. Um, what the best way to use this technology is, but it's going to help in regards to field zones. Hey, they just moved to the logo, shot alert, uh, you know, third and one, alert hard count, like just being able to help whoever this player is on the field be able to lead that communication. And then depending on situations, be able to get calls in, but you're still going to have to um, signal some stuff from the sideline because we're not dealing with huddle situations. You, know, are they gonna, make sure, you mentioned making sure it's not a negative to your team. Mm -hmm. How could it be a negative to your team? I think if you just don't use it the right way. You know, if it's something that other teams are, are using at a high level and practice at a high level, and we don't, that's going to be an issue, just like anything. An, an advantage for one team is going to be a disadvantage for another. So whenever a new rule or technology changes, we have, we're very intentional to research a bunch of teams, how they're using it, so we can use the best for our team and not put ourselves at a disadvantage. Well, how many voices does somebody hear? Does it go dead at a certain time? Yep. Like, right now, they're still working out the finite details of it, Bob. But what is assumed is there's going to be a certain second or a time on the play clock to where it goes dead, very similar to the NFL. If that's 15 seconds left on the play clock, wherever that might be, to where you're not guiding that player as the play happens. Um, I know they're still working to fine tune some of those details, but one player at a time will have the player to coach communication on the field. But I mean, will it just be cutter to the quarterback? Or will yep. other voices be? able to be heard yeah i believe it's going to be the the offensive coordinator defensive coordinator to that person and I, I believe i can speak to it too we're still kind of fine-tuning some of those spencer when you know your players are younger they can make these like massive jumps and when they get older it's hard to make those significant jumps right yep. for, for jonah dome it's like i don't know if he's missed a kick since we've been out here he seems to have a presence about him yep. at practice too and he's a kicker like what have you seen out of jonah as he as he came back and he came back for a reason and a purpose this spring Jonah's on a mission too, not only for the personal goals that he has for himself, being the best kicker in the country, being an NFL draft pick, which he's working his tail off to do that. And I believe he's going to do that, full confidence in him to do that, but also to help this team win. I mean, Jonah Domas has got ice in his veins and he had a couple days ago, I think he had a kick that he wasn't happy about. I mean, just seeing his attention to detail to get it fixed. I mean, even today, working through a scrimmage, he's working through his exact game day routine, where he sits, where he gets called out from, because that's an elite competitor that only knows how to train one way. He's not just hanging out, or maybe I get a kick. Maybe, no, Jonah Domus is training no different today, April 13th, the same way he's going to train when this place is packed. And that's why he is who he is.
All right. Thank you all.